okay? Um, I have allowed the ask the pastor questions to get backed up a little bit. I'm going to do one today and then hopefully a couple next week. Um, let me read you the question. Maybe I'll read you the question. I don't have the question. <laughs> I got two answers that are exactly the same, but no question. Thaddeus, restate your question if you would please. <laughs> There was a C.S. Lewis quote that said, um, if you say that God can give a creature free will and at the same time withhold free will from it, you have not succeeded in saying anything about God. He also said that random groupings of words do not suddenly gain new meaning because we prefix some of the words God can. Oh. I assume by that logic he's saying that nonsense is nonsense even when talking about what God can do. But I feel that God being the creator of logic and reasoning in the first place can change it if he wants to. <coughs> Okay, so here, here's the thing. Would you go ahead and put the picture up, Nathan? Mm -hmm. Can everybody see that? Oh, I'm getting that. <clears throat> the square peg in the round hole. If I were to say God could fit a square peg into a round hole, would that be true? Well, I mean, look at the picture. Can a square peg go into a round hole? Well, not without altering one or the other, at least by our standards. The first thing that we have to look at in this question is we, we have to understand uh, who God is. Okay? The primary way uh, that we understand who God is is through his word. But, but honestly, his word is, is kind of the starting blocks for us uh, because he supersedes his word. Okay? <clears throat> this was given to us to put us on the right track. But we also have a spirit that brings to our remembrances the word, capital W, who is his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? And so when we look at a question as, as kind of silly as square peg in a round hole, which, by the way, I use that because I had a pastor, I, uh, a, a man that I, I very much admire his teaching, say that God could not pit, fit a square peg in a round hole, and I believe that to be garbage. Here's why. Um, scripture makes it clear to us that God is omnipotent. What, what is omnipotence? What does that mean? All powerful. All power. Omni is all, potence is power. God is all powerful. Now, at our beginning, the beginning of this creation, God created everything. Every bit of it. By his word. He spoke it into being. We do not have that power. We can manipulate things around us to create. And I've seen some pretty incredible things that have been created, both artistically and functionally. Um, but we cannot take nothing and make something out of it. This being the case, if we understand that God created everything, and God is a God of order, he created everything with a particular order. These are which we derive our laws from. And I'm not talking about um, the legal laws. I'm talking about the, the laws of how our design and creation work. Okay? And that covers everything from physics all to biology. To, there's, there are certain things that we look at and say, okay, Every time we do this, this happens. That becomes a law. All right? Um, being that God created that law, that function, 
is it not within his power to alter that? The, the reason I ask this is because by those laws, we cannot take a couple loaves and a few fishes and feed 5,000. Plus. We say 5,000, but what Scripture says is there were 5,000 men plus women and children. Um, I, I don't know how many that is, but that's more than I have at my house. Okay? Law says that we cannot walk on water. Law says that uh, when you've been dead and in the grave for multiple days, you're not coming back out. And yet these are three of the miracles that Jesus, being God, did. He altered the laws that we have to do something in spite of that law. Okay? Now, now we're going to really get scientific here, and I'm not a scientist. All right? But I just want you to posit, I want to posit this idea for you, and you can ponder it. Uh, how many dimensions are we dealing with with a square peg in a round hole? Three. Three. At the most, we can comprehend three. Now, being that we can only comprehend three dimensions, the physical peg cannot pass through the opening in that the hole is because the corners. Okay? Um, yes, ma'am. He could make it a sponge. He could make it a sponge. We could make it a sponge, but that would be cheating. <laughs> um, I need somebody young and strong. Luca, come here. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> I want to give you kind of a, an example of this. Now, without damaging our wall, I want you to pass from this side to that side. <laughs> You can't use the doors or the windows. One, two, three, go. <laughs> okay. Um, he's a little concerned. Nathan, come help me. And no, that is not me giving you permission to put him through the wall. Okay, you, you can sit down. We can't go through the wall. Why? Why? Because we're stuck in three dimensions. We cannot, a physical object cannot pass through another physical object. However, when Jesus was raised from the dead, was he limited to three dimensions? No. no. How do we know that? Because he walked through the door that was locked and bolted. He passed through. Now, I, I, I'm not a physicist. I, I, I'm not even, I didn't even do all that great in science. Um, the only time I perked up is when, when the teacher wanted to talk about evolution. Um, but what I understand is that the, the greater the dimensions, the more functionality and, and uh, viability to have, the more flexibility you have. Now, if we were to take this in the reverse, and, and we've talked about the Flatlanders in one dimension, actually it would be two dimensions, um, they could not comprehend us being in three dimensions. Okay? This is part of the problem that we have in comprehending God, because God isn't three-dimensional. He's not even four-dimensional. God is all and is in all. Okay, so however many dimensions there are, he supersedes them all. Okay, and yet Jesus, who said to Thomas, reach out and touch my hand. That's, that's a real hand. It's a human hand. It's not a ghost. It's not a spirit. It, he was a physical man. And yet he was able to pass through, now scientifically that's a really, it's an easy thing to understand, but it's a difficult thing to do. He was able to allow his molecules and his atoms to pass in between the molecules and the atoms of the wall. Now, you think about that, that's, that's really a relatively thing to do because most of us are made up of not much. And a lot of us prove that with our lack of thinking. Okay, But God, Jesus in the flesh, was able to pass through a solid wall. Now, I don't know if he came through the wall or the door. It doesn't matter. The door was locked, and he showed up in their midst. Okay? Um, so, if it is nonsense to say that 
God can give a person free will, and God in his sovereignty can take that free will away, and both of those things is it exist at one time. If that's nonsense, I think that speaks to our intellect, not to his being. Okay? I, I think it shows, it reveals our shortcomings, not his. Okay? Because I absolutely believe that God gave us free will, and I absolutely believe that he is sovereign. Okay? And why... Um, it works that way, I don't know, because I'm not God. That's, that's where I live on faith, because I don't know how he does that. Okay? So, I disagree with C.S. Lewis. I think that God can do and not do at the same time. Okay? So, um, I've got, actually, Satch, I've got two copies of it here for you, so you can read it twice. Um... Uh.